You are just on it tonight, huh? Gets cold, donkeys get active. It's feeding time, so they especially get active. But this is honest to goodness, the reason we have two donkeys. Because donkeys are playful, but they play different than goats do, where goats will butt and run and, you know, do all kinds of things like that. They don't bite, they don't kick, they don't really do any of that. Donkeys, on the other hand, are known for biting things, shaking them, breaking legs. They're just a lot more powerful, and the way that they play, their playful language is different than these guys. So in order to keep our donkeys from playing rough with our goats, we have two donkeys. That way, they can play with one another, they can both get it out of their system, they can play long into the evening, and not try to play with one of the goats. Because if these girls kicked or ran over or bit or did anything like they do to one another to these goats, it would be awful. It would be awful. And then in which case, I would have to admit that as an owner, I was wrong in keeping donkeys in because donkeys aren't known to hurt goats. But there, is, there are exceptions to the rule. I believe we have exceptions to the rule. Both have been raised in with goats since they were young. So they've been in with ruminants since they were young, but they've always had other donkeys too. So I feel like they're doing pretty good. They're doing their job here, but that's why we have two. So they play rough with one another and not with the goats. Do you like the new one? Do you like the new one? <laughs> you like the new pitchfork? Is it tastier than the last one? It is a good bit cleaner. Are you trying to eat the tag hay? You just content to sit there and chew your cud, Willow? What are you? You're an attention hawk. These girls are making up the cleanup squad today. <laughs> trying to deal with all that bedding we talked about yesterday being gross and wet. Thankfully, it stopped raining. And uh, I'm starting to get some things under control out here. Though, you guys can tell, still a mud farmer today, just like I was yesterday. Still a lot of sitting water there too. Good Lord. But that also means we're breaking in the new farm hand. And you can tell she's been christened. She's doing a good job. Today was maintenance day, and for our young junior does, it meant tattoos. And uh, it didn't go so well. Tattoo day didn't go so good, huh, Tulip? Nope, sure didn't. You can tell a lot of them were sporting green ears today. Lots of green on Opal. Miss Molly's got green. I don't know if you guys can see over there. Sassy's got some green in her ears. Oh, Sassy. Tallulah was not spared either. Let's go, buddy. Time to work. This is one of those good things about bottle babies. Like, they will literally just about follow you anywhere. And he is no exception. You ready to work? Come on, see your girlfriends? Someone must be getting pretty close. Quite frankly, guys, I'm done messing with my goats. I'm ready for breeding season to be over. So I've gone ahead and I brought, oh! She's a jumper, that's not good. I don't want her to injure herself. So basically what he's doing right now is just coming and saying, hello, are you close? May I service you? And these would all be first time fresheners. So they're all kind of new to what's going on. I know Mo, it's okay. It's okay, Mo. He's beautiful. He's nice. He's not like flu. Trust me. He won't run you like crazy. He's just interested. You guys still think he has cooties? Are you guys believers in cooties right now? Hi, bud. 
So I kind of decided I want to be done with my breeding season. So that's why instead of waiting for these guys, it's kind of weird when the adult does stop cycling some of these younger does, they cycle, but it's just like they don't cycle as intensely because there's not so many other does cycling too. So I decided that these guys are young enough and small enough and um, Love Bug is actually gentle enough. He's not like Fluke. He's not the herd king who's like hell bent to breed. He's going to be a lot more gentlemanly this year because he's young. He's a first year sire. Uh, he's almost nine months old. I know a lot of people don't like to use um, bucks this young but I don't see an issue in it and he's only got um, a couple of does to breed he's bred a couple this year already um, one on ones hand breeding put him in for a couple of times took him out so he didn't get overwhelmed trying to run does or to push them into a heat much like older bucks will so you can see he's already in here just kind of chilling out and being a gentleman so hopefully we'll be wrapping up our, our breeding season because I realize now I'm going to be kidding into June, which I'll miss a good portion of shows. That'll put me milk testing these guys later than the rest. And they won't be in peak production until maybe state fair. State fair, they might be around peak production, which I'm hoping to go to state fair this year. See girls, he's a gentleman. Molly, he's a gentleman, I promise. And we were having a severe drop in temperature, so I'm hoping, not like severe, but it was like 60 the other day, and tomorrow it's gonna be a high like 30. So it's kind of severe, it's kind of a big temperature dip, but I'm hoping maybe that will push them too. His presence, his smell, all that good stuff will push them into a standing heat so that they'll be bred for um, early June babies. You're just a mama's girl. You want your mama, huh, Molly? Huh, Molly? Another thing I can do, I'm really good about keeping notes on my animals. It's a really good tip that when you're performing livestock husbandry, breeding, or that you have any type of purpose to having livestock, it's really good to keep um, a pretty detailed notebook where you list important dates, like when someone showed up sick, when you administered medicine, when they came into heat, because I've got a lot of these girls down as marked when they came into heat their first time. So if I go three to four weeks, from that point forward, then I can kind of figure out when they should be receptive and how long they might be in here. Because for right now, I'd like to see them stay in here and to breed. But if for some reason they keep getting out, then I'll just go back to the old fashioned way and watch for them to be bred or possibly it could be one of those, they're just not ready yet and we'll hold off until fall breeding for next year. Not what I want for these three because they're all three big enough, healthy enough, Ducks on a deck. Do you want to lodge a complaint about the squatters? The squatters on the deck. Y'all can't tell me that's not timed. That they're not all kind of working together on this one. I'm calling cahoots. And I'm also gonna have to call my bank to let them know. <laughs> There'll be some purchases. So somebody's already gone into heat and has been removed. <laughs> so now all we have left is Mo and Opal. Honestly guys, based off of where I'm at <laughs> in the year and where this is going to put me if I continue to breed, I'm gonna be into June. I'm starting my um, kidding season in March, so I'll actively be kidding out every couple of weeks, a couple of does at a time from <laughs> mid to late March until late May. That's a long time to kind of be on kid duty. However, I feel like when I, when I kind of stretch it out like that, I'm making sure that I can focus on the kids on the ground, which is not as, is not as many as if I would have bred all of my does at one time. However, now that I'm wanting to do milk testing and showing, I'm looking at these girls and I'm like, you're gonna be dropping in late May. So you're gonna be dropping like right before show season, which means these girls will probably be able to get to like late June, July um, shows 
It's just one of those things I'm kind of kicking myself now because now that I do know what I want to do, I realize I kind of haven't set myself up for success in the best of ways, especially because we tend to take um, family vacations in October. And with these girls going so late, depending on what um, milk test I decide to use, I might still be milking in October. And that puts a lot of strain on whoever's here to watch the farm, mostly my mother. But if we leave for some reason, then I might actually have to hire a 4-H kid to come in and run my milk machine and, and to make sure these girls stay on test. But I don't know, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. If anything, this is a learning tool for next year so that I will subject myself to a shorter kidding season, which will be a lot more hectic, but overall for the overall goal of, goal of showing, raising quality Nigerian dwarfs, milk testing, and bettering the breed. This might just be a really sharp learning curve year for me when it comes to entering into the world of performance for dairy goats. But we've got one first time freshener out of the way. I'm leaving the other two in until the end of the week for him to get it done. And then if they don't get it done, if they don't cycle, then I will hold them off until fall of next year. And they can go to show as dry, um, dry does this year. Maybe try to get a dry leg, even though I'm not sure any of my girls are show material, but hey, I've never showed it. I really want to go to shows.